Hey kids, welcome to part four of the Pioneer Museum COVID-19 tour. Uh, just mention this, this building was a school at one time, it was a St. Paul's Catholic school, built in the, probably about 1901 or in that time period. So you might hear some creaking as we walk around. Those are the wooden floors. And uh, other than that, there might be some other noises like ghosts, but you know, I don't know for sure where they're at, but uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, this is the military room. And the military room is, is really interesting. It has all sorts of different historical military memorabilia. Um, everything from guns and swords to examples of airplanes up here that we've uh, been given to display to uniforms, just all sorts of different things. Got a few questions from some of the students. Uh, Bailey asked about the airplanes. How big are the airplanes, or what can you tell us about those? And this is Jim. He's going to be kind of the expert in this room, and he's going to tell us everything he knows about what's in this room. Sure. What about the airplanes, Jim? Well, these are airplanes are model airplanes, so the ones that you're seeing here are anywhere from a foot to three or four feet long, depending on what they were. Of course, the real airplanes would have been uh, much, much bigger, uh, probably about the size of a small building. Uh, these were built here in Fairmont. They're models put together by Rich Johnson, who ran Culligan Water. Uh, and they represent all sorts of planes that were flown in the World War II, uh, Korean War, and Vietnam War uh, eras. Uh, and some people from Martin County may have flown these types of planes or been on these types of planes. Uh, and they really just add a neat element to the room, uh, just a good visual of uh, what the skies of war would have looked like. Okay, one thing that's interesting about uh, uh, soldiers is when they were on the battlefield, how did they eat? They used something called a mess kit. Do you want to show us that, Jim? Sure. The mess kit, and, and uh, that would be right over here. Yeah. So here's a good example of a mess kit. Now, when you eat at home, you can go to your cabinets, you pull out a, a bowl and a drawer, or a bowl and a spoon. Uh, these mess kits contain everything that you needed to eat while you are out in the field of battle. Now, I am not a World War I soldier, so I... Uh, you're you're going to go hungry. <laughs> yeah, I don't open these every day. Uh, but as you can see, this bar here would have kept us shut. It's pretty secure because it was very muddy in World War I. And this would have had your knife, your fork, your spoon, everything that you uh, get from your drawers today, they carried with them so they could eat uh, and have a decent meal while they're out in battle. No McDonald hamburgers or prime rib though, it doesn't look like, huh? No, no, you're talking uh, salted pork, uh, dehydrated vegetables, just anything that would be uh, shelf stable for a long time because you didn't know when you're gonna get back to a city to have a decent meal. Next thing I'd like to point out to the kids is that model up on the wall up there. That's called Fort Fairmount. Not Fairmont, but Fairmount. Why was it called Fort Fairmount? Do you know, Jim? Uh, well, yeah, I don't know for sure, but uh, fair often means uh, a nice or a beautiful place. Uh, so the people that came here to settle saw that this was a really a beautiful land, so they named the fort after that. Okay, Fort Fairmount. Where was it located? Uh, Fort Fairmount was located where the current Martin County Courthouse is today. So if you're up around that area, that's where the fort would have been. Uh, Wyatt asked, did Native Americans live there? Uh, no, they didn't live in the fort. Uh, they would have lived in the land around the town. Uh, but oftentimes, they would come and trade at the fort, um, or they would come into town to interact. Um, they also came to communities like East Chain, uh, Ceylon, um, basically any of these small towns would have had some relationship with Native Americans. Sure. Okay, well, what are some of the other interesting things in this room? Things that you think in your mind stand out and that kids would be interested in? Oh, sure, absolutely. Well, this is one of our newest items. These are rotor caps from the uh, blade wings of a helicopter. These were actually used in Vietnam, and as you can see here, this got damaged. Uh, we asked the pilot if it was a bullet hole, but he said no, it wasn't quite so dramatic. He just ended up clipping something when he was flying. Uh, other interesting things we have in this room. 
This here is a photo album with a lot of Martin County veterans. Your parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, they may be in here. Uh, you see here, this is a gentleman from Sherburn. Here's one from Ceylon. Here's one from Fairmont. Uh, a lot of people in our community have served in the armed forces and we're uh, very grateful for that uh, and certainly thank them for their service. Um, if you have a grandparent or a parent that was in the armed services and they'd like to have their picture in here, uh, obviously when the coronavirus uh, pandemic dies down a little bit, we certainly would love to have you bring in a picture. Uh, we'll add it to our album here. Uh, otherwise, we have just a lot of really neat artifacts that were brought back from uh, different theaters of battle. You can see down here some things that were brought back from Germany and Japan. Uh, these were items that were either carried by soldiers or that they would have uh, picked up in their service. So they brought them back and donated them to us so we can put them on display.